Let's start with the debate over tax cuts. U.S. Congressman Jim Rands, a Democrat from Virginia, and Congressman Brian Bilbray, a Republican from California. Uh, Congressman Bilbray, you first. Are you for, uh, where are you on these uh, Bush tax cuts, which are set to uh, terminate for everyone this January? Well, Chris, I wasn't there when they were passed, but the fact is I think it's the worst time to be talking about um, kicking in a new tax increase anywhere along the board. And you know that. It's a, basically the biggest problem here is the fact that we can't take, continue to think that we're going to take money out of the economy and keep the economy strong. And I'm kind of interested because I've been listening for 10 years, people saying that all the tax cuts of uh, Bush were only for the wealthy. And now I'm starting to hear that oh, we're only um, there was some of it of, or a large portion that might have been for the middle class. And we won't touch that part. It seems inconsistent with what I've been hearing for the last 10 years. And you got to admit that. So you want to have uh, keep all the Bush tax cuts for the next 10 years as, they, as you've had for the last 10 years? I think we darn well maintain it right now, and I don't think we have a right to ask the vo voters or the public to pay more taxes when we've already proven that we're mismanaging what we've got across the board. We had to go back to the what we did in the late 90s, and that's say, look, let's rein in our expenditure. Our spending problem is the real problem, and allow the economy to grow past the, and, and beyond the debt like we did in the, in yeah, the late 90s. Yeah, everybody says that. Everybody says that, Congressman. We have a 1.4, 1.7 range of debt deficit this year right now. Nobody's talking about cutting out a deficit, government spending by $1.4 trillion. I mean, everybody says, let's get rid of spending. You don't have a program to get rid of a trillion and a half dollars in spending, do you? We actually got the started back in the 90s by saying we set a standard that we're going to hit the threshold. I mean, you start off with little things like, why, why are we giving away surplus government funds to local governments or different nonprofits instead of spending and putting it on okay. the market? 90, right. $98 billion, I mean, a, a billion dollars just in un, um, funds that are being given away and inappropriate funds that even the president uh, talked about okay. this last, last week. Right. And I well, think you I never get I never get it. Next time, I'm waiting for somebody to give it. Actually, Paul, uh, Paul Ryan's given me a list, but it's hard to come up with a list of actual spending cuts because nobody likes to be identified with those. Uh, Congressman Rand, where do you? Well, that's true. I mean, it's easy well, for tax start cuts. With no pay this doesn't pay take raises. a lot of guts to be for tax cuts for everybody, uh, is about, it? Admit it's start? easy. Admit it's easy, sir, Admit, to be for tax cuts. Actually, it's you, easy. It's it is a, it is easy to do that. It's tough to be for saying no pay raises for the federal government through the next year. Let's start with that. Let's just start by saying, look, everybody's hurting, and those of us well, in the federal government are going to lead well, off. Well, that's on. popular. Screw the bureaucrats. Everybody loves well, to do no, that. So, Let's face it. The, the easiest the, politics the in America Congress is to say, I'm going to let the deficit stay real big, and by the way, I'm going to make it a little bigger by cutting taxes. No, you're not. What you're doing is going to say the spending and the size of the federal government is the problem. We are trying to spend our way out of this okay, problem, okay. and I, that's how we got into the problem. One last question: Do you believe that we actually increase government revenues when we cut taxes? Absolutely, because it, when it when it stimulates the economy, it, uh, okay. Clinton proved. Wait a minute, Clinton well, let's, proved let's it Let's cut taxes down to one percent. When he cut taxes, let's get them down to one percent. Let's get them down to one percent. We'll balance the budget in five minutes, by your theory. Look at California. We raise taxes, and look what we've done. I mean, okay, Chris, right. we're driving companies now, out. Now, by I your just theory, got... the law, why don't we just keep lowering taxes, sir, till we get them down to zero? Because if, by your theory, every time we lower taxes, we get more revenue coming in the door. This is like the loaves and the fishes. No, 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 no. This is the New Testament. a balance, Chris. Look, I was a mayor. I, I was the chairman of a county. Okay, there's okay. A, there's a balance there. This the is problem popular. Is I know everything you're saying. The voters out there on the Republican side especially are saying, thank God for Congressman no, Bill no. Bray because he's going to cut our taxes. Chris, just don't. It's me it's courageous. Listen to the independents. Right. They are the people that are saying, look, okay. they okay. want a moderate approach here. But the attitude that we've reached since is that spin, spin, spin. They didn't like Bush spending. They didn't like the yeah. Republican spending. And now you expect them to like the Democrats spending no, it's more. Just a, They're not going your to. Your party used to be pay as you go. Your party used to be balanced budgets, pay as you go. The Jerry Ford party, the Bob Dole, the Bob Taft party was, if you're going to spend a dollar, you're going to raise a dollar. And you would always be honest about that. Now you say, magically, just keep cutting taxes and somehow the government will balance its books magically when nothing else in American economic life works that way. Well, first of all, Chris, there's nothing magic for those of us in local government that the fact is when the private sector has the funds, okay. they generate the revenue that pays our government well, tolls. Okay, let me get balance in our timing here. Congressman Moran, you just heard the argument. Cutting taxes increases it receipts. Yeah. Somehow the government increases the amount of money it collects by lowering taxes. Just keep doing it. He says it works. Well, it's not the first time we've heard that argument. We've been hearing it for decades. Uh, it, 
the, uh, the fact is we need to do both. Uh, George H.W. Bush, the 41st president, did it the right way. He raised revenue and he cut spending. And then Bill Clinton followed on his lead uh, with a balanced budget and created a surplus. Uh, taxes went up, in fact, 39.6% for the highest level, but 23 million jobs were created, and it was the most after-tax revenue ever generated during that eight-year period by the most wealthy people in this country. Uh, the fact is that the 2001 and 2003 tax cuts generated 13% more revenue that came back to us, so 87% was unpaid for. It's $2.3 trillion that has been added to our deficit. It's the principal cause of the deficit. Taxes is the Bush tax cuts. Is the Bush tax cuts, George W. Bush tax cuts. And, uh, and what we need to do now is to do what Clinton and his father did to get us back into balance. Today we have 14.8% of GDP. Why do you think the Clinton Truman. administration ended up with a surplus when Ronald Reagan, as much as he's beloved these days, did not end up with a surplus? He had a deficit every single year and growing. Why do you say that this pro program of cutting taxes somehow yields a balanced budget or brings back fiscal sanity somehow. Congressman Bill Bray. Chris, because Democrats... And when has it happened? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Democrats and Republicans, so Clinton and the Republicans finally got spending under control to the point to where the economy could catch up. That's why it worked. There was the one time that you saw a Democratic president and a Republican Congress finally, and it tussled, let's face it, it was a tough time, but we finally wrestled down the fact, the expansion of but, expenditures. Right now, we're going just the opposite. Who was the, the, the last Republican president to bounce the budget now that you're the party of fiscal responsibility? When's the last Republican president. You had a Republican president under Bush, George W. You had under Reagan. You had a, at least half control of Congress. When's the last time a Republican president has yielded a balanced budget you had or a, a surplus? You had Just a Republican a Congress that allowed a, a Democrat to do it, and that's a bipartisan uh, kind of effort. We made it was actually no, Bush, Dwight Eisenhower. Bush, Bush went over the top after the war and used the war as an excuse to do domestic spending. And the Republicans made that mistake. But it doesn't mean that the Democrats have any reason to do the other. And that's why the independents are up, uh, up raising. That's why this issue is going to be a yeah. real, the top issue. Well, and independents are deciding this. Chris, it's not Democrat-Republican partisanship. But you know, Brian, it's uh, it's nonpartisan. Are really you, mad about this. You can identify cuts that, uh, that total less than 1% of the budget and a small fraction of the deficit. We're going to have to take a comp comprehensive approach. And the first thing we need to do is to get revenue back into a normal range. Uh, normally, it's 20 to 21%. Uh, and, uh, and that's basically what we're spending, 20.6%. Uh, but uh, today, with the stimulus, it's more than that. But generally, that's about what it comes to. You can't balance the budget. You can't treat your grandchildren fairly when you're only bringing in less than 15% of GDP and you're spending over 20%. It's almost criminal what the and Republican Party is willing to steal from their grandchildren and our grandchildren. Whoa, That's whoa, whoa, the problem, Jim, Jim, Brian, Jim, just Jim, because it's politically popular, Brian. Let's go back to 08 spending. Let's start by going back to a baseline that's defensible. Let's talk about take what's left of the stimulus and not spend it. Let's take what's left of TARP and not spend it. Let's prove okay. to the American yeah, people that we're willing to take uh, the know, tough talk decisions. To Governor Schwarzenegger, who still has billions of dollars who are, that are unspent but are, but are designated for and road it's not projects helping and California. other infrastructure projects. Let's take a look at one well, of your leaders. Here's one of your leaders, the majority whip, or actually minority whip, uh, Eric Cantor of Virginia. Here he is on MSNBC with Savannah Guthrie uh, on the Daily Rundown this morning. Let's listen. Will you just as simply acknowledge that passing these tax cuts worsens the budget deficit problem? I mean, you can't Savannah, deny that, right? So, so so, Savannah, let, let's look at it through the prism of the working families who are seeking jobs and the small business people who are creating them. It's not, it's not a tax cut they're looking for. They don't want a tax hike. I just, w just was wondering if, the, you had a, if you had any dispute with the notion that it does exacerbate the deficit picture. Well, I, what, what, I, what I said in the beginning is um, if you have less revenues coming into the federal government, and more expenditures, what does that add up to? Certainly, you're going to dig, dig the hole deeper. Well, there he is, uh, Congressman Bobray, your leader. Your whip is now admitting that if you cut taxes, you're increasing the deficit. He just said it. Do you want me to repeat it? That's okay. your leader. Why would he say something like that that runs against your, your orthodoxy? The 
the fact is, look, Chris, you can't well, get around the fact. The fact is fact. he just said that. Why did he just say that cutting taxes at this point is going to yield a lower revenue and therefore a bigger deficit? Because he just said that the contradiction cutting, to what you just said. We're not even talking about cutting taxes. We're talking about not allowing an increase to be Continuing the Bush tax cuts is what we're talking about. And that's and what that he was talking maintaining about. maintaining the status quo. Are of you what in disagreement with Eric Cantor? Just tell me you disagree with him. We'll I be on the same page. I am in disagreement with anybody okay. that thinks that we can get ourselves out of this mess by raising more taxes on the American okay. people. We've got, look, the we, federal we, we government well, just needs you. to live this within This is an means. interesting debate, and I think American people ought to be paying attention to it. The Republican philosophy is supply side, the belief that if you cut the taxes rates, somehow the overall amount of revenue will come up, somehow will begin to balance the budget. That's an argument that you can argue and argue and argue, and we'll always be looking for evidence we, of that. And Congress we know what works, and we know that hasn't worked. Okay, well, thank we you. Well, we know so it worked in the 90s with the Republicans and, and Democrats working together. We saw bipartisanship okay. It's also very good to look at history and which presidents have been successful. Harry Truman and Bill Clinton, I think, are the ones that have bounced the budget. And if anyway, they had thank a re you. Republican Congress to help them, that makes it possible. Well, Harry didn't. Anyway, thank you, Congressman Jim Moran and Congressman Byron Bilbray.